Hi there. I'd like to make a brief presentation to discuss a concept with you, something that I've come to refer to as the grand apology. And it's important because I think we need to address the timely aspect of obesity management. Are we engaging with our patients early enough in the disease process? Uh, are we able to set them on a path to success uh, early enough? Um, we know that uh, the field has changed in the last uh, few years, and now we view obesity as a chronic medical condition. Um, this has been endorsed by the World Health Organization 2010, American Medical Association 2013, the Canadian Medical Association 2015, and as well the Canadian Obesity Network. So obesity as a chronic condition allows us to really understand many of the professional and scientific aspects that are necessary for success in the outcomes we're trying to achieve. This requires an understanding of genetics, the science of the appetite system, evidence on hormonal, neurological, and metabolic responses to weight loss, uh, hypothalamic set point, as well as the uh, fact that weight regain occurs after treatment is removed, which is a fairly consistent point with any chronic condition. So there's a lot that healthcare providers actually offer to obesity management, but we're not really getting a chance to access this. And the evidence suggests that in a way, with chronic disease management, that it really rests on the patient-provider relationship. The provider is really needed for diagnosis and, and recommendations. In other words, what is the knowledge of the condition and what are the knowledge of the pathways that will lead to an improvement in condition? But then it shifts towards the patient. And so the clinician then needs really to work with the patient uh, for helping them to accept their condition and really to adhere to the management principles. So I want to emphasize the importance of this relationship. What do we know about the patient-provider relationship regarding obesity management? And unfortunately, what we know is alarming. Persons with obesity feel completely responsible for managing their condition. They don't really see their healthcare provider as being involved in this journey. Providers experience a lack of time and more important issues as barriers to addressing obesity management. So they're reluctant to put the issue on the table. Persons with obesity delay raising the issue with providers. So even when they are looking for help, we see that there's a delay. And persons with obesity feel condemnation and lack of support in their interaction with providers. So from a relational perspective, this is actually not a positive sign. Now, if you reflect on where we are, it might be useful to think that, you know, actually science doesn't have a great memory, but people do. Uh, we remember, uh, and we sometimes have trouble letting go. Um, so from a scientific point of view, we know that new discoveries overturn old findings. And providers are actually pretty accepting of this. We, we, in essence, move on quickly. When a breakthrough medication has been developed and all of a sudden we have the ability to treat a condition differently or, or treat a condition that was previously not treated, we're quite happy to recommend and move into this treatment arm. But people are more challenged with acceptance and moving on. Human behavior is rooted in habits, so change is resisted just for change's sake. Is you know what's wrong with what I am doing now is probably the most common response that people make when they're presented with change. Evidence suggests that obesity is both avoided and a source of judgment within the patient-provider relationship, as we've just seen. So this raises the issue of trust, and if persons with obesity do not trust providers, then it actually is going to fall to us to address this issue. Because if their experience has been one in which it's been a negative encounter, then they're not likely to raise it. So really timely intervention in obesity management requires the provider to address the issue of the approach to obesity. But how do we do this? And changing the conversation becomes really a relationship dynamic. So it's really about us healthcare providers becoming comfortable through communication strategies 
to try to shift. So there, in essence, needs to be a link from the past to the future. The past is, would say that individuals living with obesity feel shamed by their healthcare provider, don't see their healthcare provider as a source of help, and avoid addressing the issue. The future needs to be much more engaged and active with regard to a treatment approach to obesity. And this link needs to be empowering to the patient. This is something that I've come to refer to as the grand apology. In other words, we really owe it to our patients to provide them an understanding that allows them to be validated in their experience of being judged, acknowledging that our approach has contributed to that judgment, that in essence is the apology, and then allowing the relationship to form around moving forward. Now we've been here before. Type 2 diabetes used to be viewed as a minor condition pretty much in the hands of the patient. Patients would be blamed for not getting their A1C under control and additional medications or insulin was perceived as both a threat and a sign of failure. The United Kingdom Prospect of Diabetes Study became a game changer for this. After the UK PDS, now type 2 diabetes was a progressive disease that required increases in medical management regardless of self-care. So we've been there before with type 2 diabetes. We've had to say, okay, you know what? Our approach has been to shift the burden for you to manage it. We now realize that treatment is necessary because it will get worse on its own. So my point here is that this is not a new thing for us. How do we navigate this shift in relationship? And I would offer you the, the uh, approach would be first to ask permission to discuss the problem. And asking permission to discuss the problem allows the provider to give the context would it surprise you to know that until recently, providers saw obesity as a problem to be solved by you, the patient? That providers saw the barriers to raising the issue with patients as, as reasons that, that they wouldn't address there? You then seek the patient's reactions to these statements and ask permission to present a new perspective. And so in offering this new approach, and this is something that one of our group, David Macklin, will present as this. Um, as medical science advances, it has recently become more clear that struggling with weight is a complex biological, neurohormonal, primarily genetically conferred, powerfully environmentally influenced real medical condition. And notice that that may take a bit of time with you and your patient to sort through what all that means. Treatment exists, but it is unlikely in your struggle with weight that you have ever been provided a comprehensive evidence-based ethical support and treatment for what you struggle with. And so you can see that this is really an invitation to reconsider not only how the patient has gotten to where they are, but also reconsider the future. Where are you going next? Would you be willing to work together to develop an approach that maximizes your health, function, and quality of life? So it's my hope that by presenting this grand apology, it allows us to conceptualize how we need to support our patients and how we need to offer our patients the opportunity to understand that the shift in, the, in, the, in our approach and understanding to obesity management then can become a pivot point for a more optimistic medical management approach to obesity. Thanks.